operations, but now we'll jump to Christian, and Christian's going to take us on a little bit of a deeper dive into the concept development process of the inside of the stations. Hi, my name is Christian Dorat. Uh, I'm a senior concept artist uh, on the environment team, and uh, we're going to look at the concept development for the space station a little bit. So first off, we looked at the heat map. So there is a lot of um, what I said, the electricity is gone, the, the heating is gone, and the breathable air, the oxygen is gone. So um, there is pretty much all of those connected areas, they are, um, they are lifeless in, in a way, right? So you wouldn't settle down somewhere in between those, uh, um, in between those empty corridors. We were trying to uh, sort our thoughts and get them on paper, right? So we were exploring different ideas that we on the concept team had in mind. Uh, so we were thinking about pathways um, that the player and the NPC could take. So what would happen, we were thinking about what would happen if all of a sudden one pathway is blocked off or um, another one will open up, right? So we were thinking about verticality and um, how the players and the NPCs can traverse all of those um, interesting areas that are in the end pretty uh, ominous, right? So think about there are some people just screwing off side panels on the wall or they are uh, screw, uh, screwing off um, ceiling panels and you would see all of the maintenance areas behind it. So, so we'd see a lot of struts, a lot of working areas, there's cables hanging. So. Um, those were the very first sketches where we could uh, see what those eventually could evolve into. And um, we also started then slowly with some uh, loose uh, uh, 3D sketches. So getting everything into 3D and it's pretty much evolved over time where we could talk to the environment guys and we were asking for some of the current rest stops, uh, uh, geo and some of the textures and uh, then getting them uh, um, into 3D. And we were just changing up all of the props, all of the side panels or all of the, the whole uh, um, the environment. So we could, looking back at the references, then convey this feeling. We could introduce more dirt. We could introduce uh, some damaged panels, side panels, and pretty much explore this uh, side area, right? And the, the big advantage of this is that we can you know, make the, the environment how we like. So one thing that we did is like kill all the lights uh, because we don't need lighting. We want to we wanna create our own lighting. And this is what, what I said earlier. Um, the current rest stops are super bright. They are, uh, they are family friendly. But now we want to make it ominous. We want to make it dark mood. We want to make it super dark with the players like always feeling kind of in danger and especially with the gang members in mind, right? So. This would allow us to create one of, uh, uh, one of the very early, or uh, one of the, the um, earlier um, 3D explorations, which then lead to one of the final uh, concept arts or the, um, the final implementation of this. So when we were at a point where we were kind of um, okay, or where we thought like, okay, this is, this is an environment uh, that we want to see, then we took care about the last 20%. So the last 20% in this case means having a final render and uh, painting over. So we were just, um, painting over in Photoshop and doing some, uh, um, some more refined, uh, refinements for the mood and the lighting. We were painting in some, uh, some of the decaling and some of the graffitis because it is ultimately easier to do all these things in uh, 2D than in 3D and caring about the, the materials. So we were able to um, yeah, just refine the, the final concept in, in, uh, in this regard. And this, this wasn't a, a straight straight process from A to B. It was um, an iterating process. So and in between, if you look at some of the other concepts, um, for example, the barriers, we were at one point thinking about what would happen if we introduce barriers that the gang members then would set up on one point. So what does that mean for you as a player? Um, what is the player doing or what is the player doing at this point? So will he encounter these, uh, um, these gang members? Will he try to find a way around? Is he going to use some of the ladders or the, um, the underground vents, for example? So we were changing the concepts here and there, um, more or less. And this leads to, in the end, having a nice var variety of concepts or uh, different types of concepts that we then could cherry pick the best parts of it or the in other teams, the environment team, the design team could cherry pick the best ideas from, from those concepts and this was pretty much a rundown of uh, um, the concept development for the Pyro Space Station's interior. Thanks, Christiana. That looked appropriately scummy. Cool. Thanks, Josh. So that was cool. looking really good. All right, so as we continue our process of exploring uh, the Pyro system, 
Uh, now I think it'd be good to look a little bit at the planets and moons that uh, populate the system. Now, uh, one of the things we thought it'd be interesting to talk about is how do we design a system from the ground up? As with all of this, we always uh, start from narrative, you know, before we put any pen to paper or we have any discussions about player experience. Um, we always start from, you know, the world that, you know, Dave and, and others have, have kind of built. Yeah, I mean, you know, and again, it's also the thing of, you know, the pyro, I think, was first initially conceived very early on in the process. But once we finally are tackling it from a, a realistic, practical, how we're going to build this, what is what is each planet going to look like, uh, you know, it's important, you know, to, to ask more questions about, to flesh it out more. Because we kept it intentionally kind of vague, because we want the art team, to you guys, to do what you do and the designers to do what they do. So when we started that exploration process, we knew we had like a, a ballpark that we needed to stay in. Uh, so we, we literally thought, okay, how do, we, how do we design a system? And fundamentally, it, it kind of comes into maybe three key areas. So um, because we're a space game, the establishing shot of that planet is very, very important because it, it, uh, it describes everything from, you know, continent breakup, fundamental palette. So right from the get-go, we, we started to sketch in ideas of what the key establishing shots were going to be like. Uh, and then from there, then we jump into um, key art. So key art is basically on the surface, what is what is the mood, what's the tone that we're expecting to see. And as you're saying, like, t t the first one we wanted to tackle was Parawan because, you know, David described this, this wonderful um, picture and it was already clear in our minds of, about what it wanted to look like. So we hit that first and, you know, we wanted something hostile. We wanted something hazardous. Uh, also, as part of this process is um, we knew our current um, tech limitations, but we also knew what we wanted to do in terms of our future tech, you know, um, future planet tech, weather, you know, so we kind of went crazy um, with ideas as, as we was exploring. So. We went through the various planets, did some key art, and again, put them up on the board. And just to validate, we are keeping within that, that palette, but we're getting that diversity. We're getting that diversity of, of color, hue, um, value structure, silhouettes, composition, um, because even within something like Stanton, there's variety, you know. Uh, that was very important for me and the team were you want to feel like you're on a space opera. You can travel around, but now we're going to a completely other system. So we continued that ideation process there. So we had